I've been talking about this for a while and uh, well things finally lined up and it's happening I, uh, I sold my car which is um, it's pretty huge it's uh, something that you know obviously there's a lot of emotion tied to it all the cars that I have are um, very special to me uh, in a certain way they you know they're cars that I've built to compete with to knowing that at any moment I could write the car off basically like we're driving 100% other cars next to you you can never know what can happen on the track but luckily that hasn't happened and uh, I found a buyer for probably one of the uh, most important cars to me and uh, what it's done for me in my career but you know time to move on and uh, it's gonna be cool because this car is going to Mr. Never Settle, Dmitry Brutsky himself. He will be piloting my, my old car now because it's his new car. So this is my E46 M3 Formula Drift competition car. This is the car that I just had out at the LZ World Tour. That we just cleaned the car up, rewrapped the entire thing oh. in the Anosa Tech um, wrap and it looked cool and I want to do more stuff with it but then uh, talking to Dimitri he actually got his pro license um, and he wanted to make that jump into pro so trying to get his car ready that he ran in pro spec ready for pro is a big undertaking there's a lot of things that you can do in the pro class that you're not allowed to do in pro spec so uh, to make it basically made the most sense for him to buy this car it's turnkey it's ready to go this car has been on the podium uh, quite a few times it's competitive and uh, yeah I mean it's turnkey this thing makes 1100 horsepower to the wheels uh, where his car makes about 700 this has a sequential transmission um, all the suspension is really set up for a lot of grip where in their class they can only run a 255 he's gonna be running a 285 on this car um, yeah it's got all the Motec stuff like this thing is this is a solid car so he's actually changed a lot of stuff on it uh, exterior wise so he's got this HGK Carbon Kevlar yeah, it so body cool. kit. It's really rad. Um, yeah, HGK makes some incredible cars and some incredible parts. So he got this stuff. So he's got all this bolted on here. The guys are working on the wrap right now, which is going to look really good. I saw the renderings of it. Um, very cool design. Um, very much, uh, very much his style. Uh, all of his cars kind of look, you know, similar. They have a lot of red in it, uh, which I think looks really good on E46s. So yeah it's happening so one car sold I got a lot of other cars and um, you know I've talked about it before briefly but but not really gone into detail about what what my plan is in the future obviously you know I'm here at DDE now but uh, I've got a lot of cars I've got my E46 M3 road race car that uh, is also available it's ready to go I think uh, basically all I want to do to it is powder coat the the front lip here. So just get this aluminum piece powder coated black, um, get the wing uprights powder coated black, and it is a turnkey ready to go race car. That is a ton of fun to drive, but my heart's just not really in it anymore. I've been doing this for a long, long time. Basically, since I was 15 or 16, I think I've probably worked on a car every single day. Oh, or close to it, right? That's a lot of years. I'm 44. That's incredible. It it uh, it's still a passion of mine, but my newest passion is uh, just a crazy adventure, really. So my family and I want to buy a big sailboat. We want to move on to the boat and basically sail around the world and just uh, see where you know where the wind takes us. So, basically, so you're gonna sell all your cars I'm and your sell money's all coming cars. with you. All my cars are gonna be sold. The the boats that I'm looking at are not at all cheap, and uh, boats are expensive. Yeah, to begin if you're with. gonna live on it, should be pretty good. Yeah, we're looking at like 50 foot catamarans. Yeah. Um, not new because those are millions of dollars um, used to maybe like a 20 year old boat. Uh, but that's all in the details. So basically, once I sell all these cars, save up a bunch more money, um, then we're gonna start doing some boat shopping and uh, look and see what we can get. Uh, when all that stuff happens, I will obviously keep you guys in the loop because I'm going to start a YouTube channel as well, uh, but not automotive. It will be about uh, my adventures on the water, how all of that stuff is going to happen. Like, we're literally going to sell everything that we have. So, all my cars, my trucks, 
my whatever tools, like all this stuff's gonna be gone. I take all this money and uh, drop it into a boat. So and, all uh, your money's going underwater. All, all my money. <laughs> well, hopefully not. Hopefully there's only a few feet underwater. Well, yeah, I, I, and then the I rest guess of it's so. above the water. But the the whole thing will be on the water. So basically, I take go. all my money and just it'll just float. Dude, that's so cool. <laughs> that's so cool. It's uh, it's crazy, but uh, I don't know. I've always done crazy things, and um, yeah, I feel like that's an adventure that. I can bring my family with me. Yeah. When I go racing, it's just me, right? Yeah. My family's there, they're supporting me. Um, my daughters have go-karts, my wife has a go-kart. We go out to the track sometimes, but it's really more my passion. Um, and like I said, I've been doing the racing stuff for so long. Is it fun? Yes, it's a blast. But there's so much that leads up into it, right? And I've just done it for so long, just looking for something new. So that's, uh, that's what's happening, that's, you know, this will help pay for that once I finish the GT. Have some fun with that car oh, yeah. for a while. Um, depending on how all that goes and everything, you know, all the pieces fall in place. I'm still looking for an engine for that car for a reasonable price. So if you guys have any leads on that, well, let me know. Um, we're still seeing if we can build that engine, if I can find a, the GT3 body kit for it, which has been really tough to find um, nice used parts. They're. Uh, there's not that many of them out there. A lot of teams will use their parts, and if they're slightly damaged, they'll repair them because they're yeah. so expensive from the factory. And I don't really want to spend $100,000 on a factory body kit for a $70,000 car. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So still trying to figure out the direction of that. But yeah, I've got my, I've got my F30. Um, that thing rips. Like, yeah. that's an awesome car. I've got that practice car over there that uh, eventually I'll... Uh, finish that thing and that'll be ready, you know, ready to go. And then I've got my Cayman. Um, still not sure the direction that I want to go with that. I was thinking about making it into a drift car, but that kind of narrows down the market quite a bit. So uh, maybe I'll just turn it into a road race car. That's, uh, you know, a lot of people are looking for solid Porsche yeah. race cars and that'd be one of them. So that's the plan. Now this isn't going to happen quick. It's going to be at least two years. So don't worry, I'll still be on the channel. Or if you guys don't like me, then yeah, I'll be here for then two more worry. years. Yeah, don't worry, yeah, I'll be here for two more years. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this thing is looking really good. You got a, a good look at it from the side here. We've got uh, almost all the wrap on the driver's side. So Making how long that. did you have this car for? Um, I built this car in 2017. Yep. Yep. So I didn't run it in 17. I ran it in uh, 2018. So okay. uh, that would be four. I ran it for four years. Yeah. Yeah. In FD. Um, yeah. You know, it's, a, it's the end of an era, but uh, it'll be really cool because seeing Dimitri in the car, running in pro, I know he's excited. I'm excited. I'm excited too. Um, yeah, so the first car he bought from me was my uh, Z4, which I ran for two years. I ran it in 2011 and 2012 in Formula Drift. And um, he had a Z3 at the time. He really liked the body style. He liked the way they drove. Uh, which was actually a really good move. It was a really hard car to drive, but it's it's almost like training. So he drove that car for two years, right? Yeah, yeah two years. And um, the car tries to fight you all the time, and it's, it's, it's tough, right? You're going against really good drivers with really good cars, and you're almost at a disadvantage because the car is so difficult to drive. But it's very similar to an E46. E46 is just more stable. So once he jumped into my uh, 2013 Formula Drift Championship winning car, that car, he jumped in it and right away won his first Pro Spec Championship and then the next year won another Pro Spec Championship. And then finished third. And then finished third the year after that. Like some solid year. So it was really cool to see that car that, you know, that I made um, my dreams come true in, right? Winning the championship yeah. and then seeing him drive the wheels off the car and win two more championships uh, was really cool. And actually, this guy over here owns that car. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we'll see, you know, he's, yeah, he's ripping too. So we'll see how he progresses and uh, moves up. Um, but yeah, it's just so cool to see these cars that have, you know, so much history for me out there on the track. And uh, yeah, just like opening up Instagram or something and, and seeing him like ripping around the track. Like, oh, shit, like that's my old car. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. That's how this is going to be with this car. You ready? Yep. All right. What car do you have here today? Uh, BMW. Last time when I be here. Uh, all guys joke uh, for me because I'm driving the Tesla, but it's not. It's just daily car, daily car <laughs> Tesla. I have uh, real cars. I have real cars, bro. <laughs>
Yeah, it's uh, stuck uh, M2. Yeah. Ready to smoke check, ready for road, but have angle keep, vice fab, BC coilovers, and and welded differential. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. That's awesome. <laughs> Full stack. Full stack. Only the handbrake. Oh, that's so sick. Oh yeah, that's sick. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I'm driving this car on track. Yeah. A tandem drift, ready to tandem drift. Yeah. Let's go. Well, I'm excited to see you put down a good lap here because if you did a better, uh, some better drifts in the uh, Tesla, then that would be too good. A little bit better good. than Tesla. I, I, I hope so. I, uh, I agree with I hope that. so. This wrap is a cool color, too. Yeah, dude, it's sick. I think. <laughs> dude, he's got lights that <laughs> Dude, hell yeah. Yeah, this is going to get down. <laughs> I think a little bit better than Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit better. I think so too. That's super cool. Yeah. Those cheap tires smoke like crazy. Yeah. There's a lot of smoke coming off those things. Yes, you can uh, a lot of power. Yeah. Yeah, around 500. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds pretty good too. Yeah, it does. Sick. Yeah. It's hot. Oh yeah. Woo! I forgot to uh, shut off my air condition. <laughs> not, oh, yeah. not not full power. So you were nice. And, you were nice and comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Full work, uh, electrical uh, seats, uh, <laughs> heat seats, no problem. <laughs> Super fun. Yeah, and uh, interesting because this car is stock for cooling system, yeah. full stock and ready for this. Yeah. Oh, it's so smoky. <laughs> 
said you're thinking about selling it? Yeah, I'm selling him. Uh, you can uh, call me if you want a good uh, drift car, good uh, street car, car ready for registration, full ready. And uh, have uh, ready for smoke checks because uh, have a uh, full exhaust, uh, not, not full, just uh, rear exhaust, uh, yep. different, but uh, have a uh, catalytics. I don't know how in, uh, in uh, It's got the, the cats are still in cats, it. Yeah, all stuck. Yeah. All stuck, ready to, ready to every day. Look guys, we're selling cars here today. <laughs> we're we're gonna make you like a crazy. deal. Come on down right now. <laughs> Get you out here. You're gonna pick up a brand new We're only BMW. selling BMWs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mike's got three BMWs and a Porsche for sale. Yep, whatever you need, come on down and I'll put you in a BMW. If you need a truck, don't worry about that. You're gonna be leaving today in a BMW. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, every ma every week I say I don't buy never tires for this car, never. And uh, and when the week end, I say okay, only two tires. Okay, I just, just yeah, <laughs> just two, just two, <laughs> just five, <laughs> just, just four, just six. <laughs> oh, again, 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 good event. Maybe one more event, one more, <laughs> just one more. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Very Driving, drifting car. is like a drug. You just you yeah. get addicted to it. You're hooked, and uh, <laughs> yep. You gotta have tires, you gotta feed that passion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Super cool. Oh my goodness. A James Dean. Ouch. Oh my god. Bring your car. My the fucking with the passenger, like, he's in there with a t shirt and, and pants, it's media day. And the car kind of fire, dude. Wow, wild. Man, that's not the way you want to start the season. That is crazy. And I'm glad these guys are okay. So yeah, at the end of the season last year, James Dean um, got bumped by Matt Field at Irwindale going into the second bank and literally rolled the car over Whoa. onto the K rails, bounced off and slammed back down. And uh, he broke like his his uh, collarbone, I think. Um, drove the rest of the event still, like pushing. But end of the season, like not on a high note. And then the start of the season with a fire, that is insane. Like RTR is a huge team. I'm sure they'll get the car back together. But uh, yeah, it's gotta it's gotta hurt your confidence a little bit. Like it's pretty crazy. Fire sucks. Denise, the first time, uh, <laughs> oh. finally got it. That's why I bought the car just for the stick. <laughs> finally get stick. it. <laughs> I won the championship with this stick. Really? Yep. <laughs> Did you whack with it? Oh, a, lot of, a lot of people. A lot of people. But, uh, if you don't listen, if you're not like, the car's not ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> you say you're uh, crew people? Yeah. Is that yeah. when we had one or two? That's and always changing? That's how, you keep, that's how you keep the crew on their toes, you know? Yeah. There, there was that one, one guy, and then yeah. the next guy. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, this was a head. That's probably the Margaritas. He's yeah. pretty hard head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's got a, like a sharp head right there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we're getting it done. Oh my God, did I? <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> Dave, Dave and Kenley. Why, why are you on Mike's phone? I'm not, I'm on my phone, you just called me again. <laughs> no, I didn't, watch us. <laughs> okay, we're on a phone call, right, right now? <laughs> <laughs> yep, watch. Hold on. I can't make this up. How is this happening? You're confusing me. Go look at your text messages. Me? Yes. Oh, my bullshit. You had that in your phone. I, dude, I'm, de I'm dead serious. I could record this right now. It says I'm on a phone call with Mike Essa, and I'm 1 minute and 11 seconds in on this call. What are you at? One minute and 12 seconds, 13 seconds, 14 seconds? Dude. Uh, <laughs> how is that possible? It's because I was facing Mark, then Mike answered. Ah! <laughs> oh, <laughs> you gave it up, damn it. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> how is this even happening to me? I've had one drink. <laughs> what was in it? <laughs> That's that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that was wrong. so confusing. <laughs> <laughs>
That was pretty funny. Wow, that, is that was awesome. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's going on, guys? So, why is the Bentley on the two post lift? So it's having a bunch of error codes for, I guess, like the aftermarket lift uh, oh, control system. Oh, the electronic system. lift yeah. lowering control system. So How Dave, does that work, by the way? So I don't know. We put another kit in there. Yeah, we did. We did that, um, like whatever it was module that plugs into the car that is supposed to trick the computer and make it yeah. think that the car is, is too high, so it needs to get lowered. Yeah, it's all software, but something's not working right, and it is just kind of a headache. Like sometimes the car is high, sometimes it's low. The controller part, the app doesn't work. Um, so we're gonna ditch that thing and just put in the links that go on to the suspension sensors on the wheels okay. to tell it how high the car is basically moving those things makes it think that the car is way too high so the car will automatically lower itself um so it's in that little arm is basically in the right position again but the kit uh, doesn't fit on the car either so two of the links are correct and yes. they'll go on so all the links are this straight style yeah but we didn't know that because we can only see the front and first. which is that the new link or the original this is link? the original one okay. so we replaced it with the similar one like that but it was shorter, it, was, it ends about here. But we thought these are for the rear because they were different, because we couldn't see the rear. Mm -hmm. But now that we put it up, they're the same as these. So So is that for the wrong car? They possibly. Now, are, I know at some point someone had sent us some. Did I think these are, the, these? these are the sent ones, I think. Okay. Well, all right. well, I don't really want to do this, but since we don't have the parts and we need to get this done, um, cut that off. Cut that off. I'll weld these two things together, mm. and then we will have a shortened link. So we'll just have solution time on it, making it work. But for Dave, we'll Anything make it. We'll make it Dave. work, Dave. Don't worry. We got you. That's a way to do it. Yep, that's one way to do it. Getting it done. Yeah. Chop chop. Anyways. What? Alright. You ready? Straight. Ready for what? Okay. Are, Are you ready? Perfect angle straight. 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 Chop it. Firing it up, getting it ready, and melt some metal together. How long have you had this welder for? Two, 20 years. Really? Yeah. Worked the whole time? And it, uh, I think I've had to change one thing on it, and one like capacitor or something like that. Yeah. It was like a, maybe a- Oh, that's cool. Three, yeah. It's got a little cart for your- Yeah, all the consumables up here. Let's swap out some- uh, What are you putting in? Uh, so this is the uh, setup for steel. I had the setup for aluminum on there, so different tungsten, a different cup, like just a very, very different setup. Yep. And now we'll uh, get this guy going. All right, another cut, ready? All right. Go ahead, brother. Slam to the ground. I'm gonna dump it. You want it in the weeds? <laughs> dump it. I want to drag the engine on the ground. You want so how long do you want to go? I want you to remove the engine mounts, remove the transmission mounts, and then it's on the ground. Okay. Sounds good. How low is it right now, can I see? Uh, right uh, now yeah. it's uh it's not very low. It's in fact in the air. All right, well, we'll show you when we're done. Well, what, what would happen if the... Uh, let's the see if I can just pull that brake while you're driving. Let's not, let's not talk about that. Wait, what? Okay.
What up? What happens if the links break while you're driving? Um, I don't know actually. <laughs> well, it, it welded. Yeah, I'm just trying to see if I could pull that like piece of the stud out of it. Um, that doesn't seem to be working, so I'm gonna try to melt it all and see what happens. <laughs> That's the way you go about it. <laughs> That's not supposed to be like that. That just <laughs> jumped out of there. Did it work? Um, so, so I don't know. I think it, yeah. So basically this, that, that old pin thing, right? Was pressed into there and then yeah. probably some sort of like glue or Loctite or something in there. And that's all burning out. Um, but now that it seems to be mostly burned out and whatever shot off here, I'll clean this thing off and see if I can get it to weld. Mm, Tim, I'll need you to hold this for me. Okay. I can't add rod to it. And hold it in place. You don't need to close. You can just hold it all the way through. Okay. It'll be fine. You know what we should do, actually? What, what thread is this? Is it a six millimeter? Um, it looks like it could be a six millimeter. It looks like a six. It doesn't look like quarter mil. Or a quarter mil. Quarter inch. <laughs> quarter mil. Quarter mil. <laughs> yeah, like back when I used to work at the old quarter mil. <laughs> the quarter mil. Okay, that was gonna be strong. That looks good. I'm being really lazy right now and not cleaning off the uh, coating on either of these things. Yeah, I think we're just kind of getting it done. Yeah, it just needs to get done. It's something that uh, doesn't need. Oh, Mike, coating. I got you. There we go, thank you. No problem. Alright, that one is tacked. Now I see the sun inside. <laughs> yeah, you missed the solar eclipse yesterday. You see it today. All right, well, those are rolled it up. Obviously, you got to let them cool down for a couple minutes. They're pretty toasty. We should be able to just pop them in and good to go. Cool, perfect. Cool. Next thing, what's the next thing we're going to see? Are we going to see the uh, Bentley nice and slammed or what? It should be. We'll see uh, how the ride adjustment is once we get these on. But, yeah, it'll probably be pretty slammed right now because we just have them max low. Nice. So, hopefully to the ground. All right, Mike, let's go check in on the Bentley boys in here, see how they're doing. Yeah, let's see what's going on over here. I hear the car running. Is it lowered yet? That doesn't look low. That looks the opposite of low. Looks higher. That's, that's the four by four mode. Let's see what's going on. Whoa, this thing's like super hiked up. So did you, oh, you found the module, right? You took it out? Yeah. yeah. So that was the uh, electronic height control module. Which I don't see any lights on the dash, so. Well, we can't do the rear from right here. We have to put it back on the dash. I mean, something happened. Um, did you guys try, like, take, like, moving the little arms and seeing which way the suspension goes? Because right now you have the links as short as they can possibly go, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably raised. So they might need to be longer. So maybe we shouldn't have cut that thing off. <laughs> I don't know how much it needs to go. There should be enough threads though to... Can you make it longer than the stock? Yeah. Right now it's just the sh it's shorter than the stock. So it can go longer for sure. But how much longer? Uh... I guess we'll find out soon. Is that? Yeah, I wouldn't do that. With your arm? With your arm? Car. No. Just in case, <laughs> just like, case it fucking it drops down. Just slams on you? <laughs> so basically, look at this. Like, look at what the length, the link length is now. Yeah. Link. And then know that that raised it a lot, and then go the opposite and see if you can make it, like, you know, 
if it's an inch shorter now, see if you can make an inch longer. Okay. All right, Tim, I've been gone for a few minutes. We haven't recorded anything. What's going on? So we messed with the uh, links a little bit, okay. and it turns out the front, uh, you basically have to make the links longer to lower it. And then the rear is actually the opposite. Make I it guess. shorter. You got to make it shorter. But right now, the rear is max, like maxed out how short you can go, and it's still really high. And the front, we can still play with it. I think it's actually a little too low right now in the front. So we can actually go back up, that's fine. Uh, but that's also maxed out of how low we can go on the front, so. Um, we maxed out on the front as far as how big the link is? Yeah, so okay. as long as the link will go and as low as the car will go, as far as the link. Okay, um, and you think that that's too low? I think so, because right now it's on the, on the, race ramp okay and i think like you can see the little flap on the fender right there yeah it's pretty close to like where the race ramp would be so that's kind of like ground level so i don't think it's too too slammed but, but i think dave wants it much more was that you wouldn't come down much more yeah i don't think i would go down much more i think dave would want it like maybe half an inch a little bit I higher i want a dirty slam well that's not the issue of how low it is he was saying because this is air ride, right? Yeah. So the more you let air out, the more mushy the suspension gets. Oh. So he was saying that it was super sloppy and like yeah. it felt terrible. So that's why, that, that was the reason he didn't want it slammed. That it wasn't sense. because it was too low. He actually liked the way it looked, but he was like, it just felt terrible to drive. Yeah, so, yeah because then you're just on airbag. Well, you're not, there's like almost no air in the bag. Yeah. So that's the problem. Um, but yeah, we gotta figure out how to get the rear lower. Um, I think because we modified that, um, like the, the push on piece yep. with the bolt, I think because the, we used the head of the bolt to weld to that, it basically uh, created like a spacer. So it made the link longer than it already was. Mm -hmm. So we gotta find a way to make it shorter or get another link that's shorter already. So um, next step would be to pull those out of the car and then probably cut them and weld them or figure out a way to fabricate them smaller? Mm, I don't know if we can cut them and weld them anymore because now, uh, basically, if we cut that bolt back off, yep. then we have to weld a stud on, which Mike already tried, and it was... The reason we welded the bolt on was because it was so much of an issue to weld the stud on. So I think we just have to get a whole new link that's the proper size. Um, yeah, maybe the sleeve itself, we can get a shorter sleeve and then we could just put those two like slip-on pieces onto the sleeve. Yep. And then that would help. But either way, we need a new piece. So uh, for you now, can't... is the uh, Bentley just raked? Uh, I think so. Uh, we'll put it back on the rack and hopefully we can find something local that has a sleeve. Or we can make a, like a, a threaded sleeve kind of piece. That'd be so sick. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's no other way because I think the sleeve itself on this one mm -hmm. is aluminum, so you don't really want to weld on that. It's already super thin, and then it, it'll be weak. All right, so now Steve is just wrapping up the rear interior. We actually took that apart because we were removing the uh, bypass like module that we put in so that we could also use an app to lower the car because that thing was supposed to like make it super easy, and we didn't have to put links in, and we could control it with our phones, but... It wasn't working that great, and it was more of a complication than anything. Now the links are super simple. The only problem is we just don't have the right link. So okay. whatever, um, that's easy, you know. So hopefully we can get the right link sooner than later, and then the car will be level at the right height that Dave wants.